just about your requirements at this moment, but your requirements for the future. Not this future necessarily, good music, but the actual future. And you don't always know those at the time. Jamie, why is my slide not going forward? <laughs> um, if you know future requirements, it's a good time to talk about them right now. Because the future applications and enhancements you want to make can affect the decision for the technology you're doing at this time. At the very end, Paul and I have a bunch of examples we're going to give you, good and bad, that we've experienced at Phoenix where we've made decisions and how they've come out. And you'll see that there was one where we deployed Drupal, made a decision, future requirements later dictated it was a bit of a retrofit. So had we known those future requirements at the time, we wouldn't have built it in a specific way. You don't always know that, and we recognize that. So if you know future requirements, it's important to share them as part of the initial build. So let's talk about some of the benefits of Drupal. Um, when you want, you want to choose Drupal when you have a content management need, like we spoke about, multilingual, portals, file management, image galleries, news, events, content types, theming, responsive, compliant, WCAG. There's a bunch of these types of requirements that fit really nice for Drupal. Drupal is a powerful tool that matches all those requirements very, very well. So if your project meets those kinds of criteria, Drupal rises to the top very, very quickly. Customization would be an isolated component of what you need, or you don't need customization at all. Um, budget always plays a role. If you have a limited budget and a limited deployment time, Drupal will work well, because Drupal gives you things out of the box that can get you up and running quickly. Those are some of the criteria that we use to choose whether you're choosing Drupal or not. Some of the benefits of using Drupal include quick deployment times because you leverage the tools that exist. It's very resource rich. Drupal comes with lots of modules, a huge developer community, patches and upgrades ongoing. Um, you can hit the ground running with Drupal. You don't have to start from scratch necessarily. You get to start with something pre-built and pre-configured. Also, Drupal has a number of modules that you can deploy based on your need. These modules you can review and test before building them. So there's less unknown with Drupal. You can take a look at a module, read its requirements, you can even deploy it and test it internally to see if it actually meets your needs or not. You can do all that before you choose it, so you can give it a bit of a test run. Um, Drupal is really good for enterprise level clients. Don't think that Drupal can only be used for small brochureware sites. We've got lots of enterprise clients that we're using Drupal for. Um, you can tailor Drupal. We're going to talk about that a bit later. And Drupal's used for all industries. I often get asked, what is the you know, most appropriate industry for Drupal? And quite honestly, it's the entire spectrum. Association, secondary, post-secondary education, healthcare, government, private sector, technology, health, did I say health? I said health twice. Um, health is important. You can use it for all industries. It doesn't matter. What matters is your requirements. Some of the use cases. So we've talked about this a couple of times already. Do you want to manage content? Or does your client need to manage content? That's a good use of Drupal. Do you have multiple content types? Different types of content that require unique layouts. Do you have multilingual requirements? We live in Ottawa, at least bilingual. But we've done websites with in one case, 86 languages. So multilingual fits Drupal really, really nicely. Portal login areas, if you are from an association or a member-based organization, or require intranet, extranet channel capabilities, Drupal is well leveraged for that. You use CM the CMS component for the public side and password authentication and login area for all the unique content and uh, tailored content and tiered content in the back end. Of course, Drupal has VK compliance capabilities, SEO capabilities, uh, responsive theming, and basically you're looking for a web site. Now what are some of the drawbacks of Drupal? Uh, depending on what you're trying to do, Drupal comes out of the box with inherent workflows. You can speak up anytime. I just don't want it to make you feel like I'm American. Uh, <laughs> inherent workflows. So based on what, depending on what you want to do, you're going to have to follow those workflows or change them. That could be a drawback depending on the capable nature, capability of your team or your, your vendor. Future enhancements. Again, we talked about this with the wrapper future. You have to think about your future enhancements. Will Drupal be the right solution in the future? If you know those future enhancements and requirements and it's a no, then you don't want to have to rebuild something. There are updates required, as with any software. Drupal requires updates and, updates and patches and releases ongoing. And, and to be secure and up to date, you should 
Yeah. Uh, and there has been problems with an upgrade process. I know Drupal 8 is looking to solve that, but typically if you've gone from Drupal 5 to 6, where we started, 6 to 7, 7 to 8, it's a rebuild. So it's, you know, when you get locked into the version that you're on. So that's Drupal. One thing I forgot to mention. If you have questions at any time, just ask me. This is not a chit chat at you. Just put up your hand if you have a question or interject where necessary. I was going to comment too, um, just about the Draw back and the entire workflow. It's not necessarily that's a bad thing, but if your client has a very specific process, a business process that they're trying to do, and that doesn't fit with Drupal, then you're just going to be clashing against it the whole time. And that's a really good. Your journalists are pretty good at identifying that, but that's that's a big key point of what we're going to talk about: whether they're going to go custom or whether they're going to Drupal or a kind of hybrid in between. So that's what we meant by the inherent process. When to choose custom? So we talked about Drupal. When do you choose custom? Um, to build a custom application, which means starting from scratch, you're building it in a framework like Laravel or PHP or anything, but you're starting it from scratch. You have to have a project that requires pretty much a 100% unique workflow and functionality not offered by any existing commercial off-the-shelf product, so a cost product. Nothing exists out there that you can leverage, so you have to go custom. So you're almost forced into custom because you can't leverage anything, at least to the point that it makes sense. Maybe you found a tool that gives you 20% of your needs. That's not nearly enough, right? Maybe you have to build custom because of that. The site has a long life expectancy. In our experience, when we build custom applications, they're so tailored to the workflow and requirements and functional needs of the client that they last for 10 plus years. We can enhance them ongoing, but the base application we build lasts a long time. So you invest the time and money in building something custom and tailored because it's gonna last for a long time. Typically, custom applications are enterprise class applications. They will be used through the business. They will be used every day by certain departments within the business, mostly multiple departments throughout the business because you're building it to solve business problems, workflows, automation, streamlining, that kind of stuff. And so essentially when you have a heavy amount of customization required that is not well served by any cost, you, you have to go custom. So some of the benefits of custom, you get a fully tailored solution, like a nice tailored suit. It fits you, your needs and requirements to a T. It looks good, it fits you perfectly. You're not fighting with the CMS and the way it works, trying to force the CMS to work in different ways, and you get exactly what you need right away. Typically, it's nice and stable long-term if it's well-built, because it's built to meet your needs. For the most part, in our experience, we've seen excellent ROI for our clients who have invested in Custom applications, we've had a client, which we'll talk about later, who saved millions of dollars in the first six months of launch by implementing a custom application. That's how much money it saved them. So they can, be, they can cost you a lot, but they can be good cost-saving measures. And it's typically an enterprise tool, like I mentioned. So how do you determine if you need to go custom or Drupal? Well, if you need a specifically tailored solution where there is no cost available, commercial off-the-shelf tool, you go custom. If you want a state-of-the-art application that doesn't exist already, you typically have to go custom. If it needs to be precise and follow a very specific workflow methodology that is internal to your business, it typically has to be custom. Unless you're willing to compromise all that and change your processes to work toward a tool, it has to be custom. Uh, you're looking for tailored growth. You know that ongoing, your future requirements will require very specific custom implementations and enhancements. And let's not forget that custom costs more money because it takes more time to build and it takes a lot more intensity because we're not giving ourselves a leg up with starting with a framework like Drupal. Everything is from the start custom. It's going to cost you more money and time. We always have to talk budget because if you don't have budget and time for Drupal, or for custom, sorry, then there's really no use talking about it. You're going to have to compromise your requirements and workflow to fit with a tool like Drupal because the budgets for custom are higher. What are some of the drawbacks to going uh, custom? Well, there's a longer build cycle, obviously, because we're not leveraging a tool and starting midway. Depending on the team that you're working with, whether it's an internal team or a vendor, there could be a high rate of error and inefficiency as the team has to figure out how to build things that are native to Drupal, like user profiles and login, um, uh, file management, all that kind of stuff that's out of the box with you ways. All that stuff that's out of the box with Drupal that you can just use and tailor as you need, now have to be built custom. You have to think about, I have to build all these features. So you're building every single piece of it 
even if on a framework like Laravel you get some of these things, mm -hmm. you still have to build them custom. So if your team isn't used to building custom applications and it's their first time out, be prepared for a lot of starting over. And it, we've seen it happen. Higher cost. Okay, with all this tailored solution, you have to have uh, more time and effort to, to build, so it costs more money. And more testing, good point. Often, you'll have to have a, relier, a reliance on the vendor that built the proprietary tool for you. So they're the ones that know the tool, you're gonna have to go back to them for, and that could be good or bad depending on your relationship with the vendor. And then any of your enhancements ongoing will also be custom. If you built the custom solution, you're, you can't then leverage Drupal for the enhancements. You've gotta keep doing everything custom so the cost is relative there. So we've done Drupal, we've done custom applications, now we're gonna talk about this midway in between. When you can actually take a tool like Drupal and customize it to your needs. So a certain, this, the best time to benefit from this is when you get a, a project where a certain portion of your needs are well met for Drupal. There's content management needs, there's image management needs, there's maybe a login area, there's lots of needs that suit Drupal well, multilingual, perhaps e-commerce, solar search. All these things are well served through Drupal. But there is a component that requires tailoring and customization. Perhaps there are tools and modules that Drupal offers that you could deploy and customize those, or there's nothing existing and you have to build it yourself. Um, you have to have the conversation, whether it's with your client, if you're a vendor like us, or with your team, if you have an internal web team, about these nuances. I don't know if you're gonna go through it, but I was gonna say that the kind of biggest defining factor of what you would call just Drupal and what we were calling right now custom Drupal is that you know a lot of the modules that come with Drupal you can you can take them and you can tweak them a bit to make them do what you need them to do right on an iterative basis. But there are components to a lot of clients' businesses that it's like this has to work exactly like this, like a certification process or whatnot. And all those things it's you know depending on your dev team, they'll go in and they'll build custom modules and they'll build workflow all the way around that. So that's kind of what we mean by Drupal. You can take Drupal leverage most of it, and then that custom business workflow you kind of tack on to the side. We have a good example of this later that we'll show you, like some real world examples where we made the decision to choose Gus, uh, Drupal and then customize it for our needs. 80% of the client requirements were specifically well tailored to Drupal and 20% weren't, so we did custom Drupal because 80% was met with Drupal, so why start custom at that point? So what are the benefits of going custom Drupal? You get all the benefits of Drupal that we talked about. You get a midway starting point, right? Drupal gets you out of the box, gets you with lots of features like login, WYSIWYG, all sorts of things, ready to go. This lets you focus on that 20% customization. So you can get up and running really quickly and then focus your time and energies on that tailored part that needs to be customized. And not the whole thing, just the bits that need to be customized. And you can get a tailored experience. We've had great success using deploying Drupal and then tailoring it, and the client gets a really unique workflow and things that meet their specific needs, and it's powered through Drupal. What are some of the drawbacks? Well, they're, again, <laughs> similar to some of the drawbacks of Drupal, you do have a possibility of fighting with the code, more so when you're trying to do custom solutions in Drupal, because you're either using a module that you're trying to force to work in a different way, or you're building your own module that then has to integrate with Drupal Core. The last 10% is often the longest, so if you have 10% um, customization you have to do, that can often take 90% of the time to get done, right? So you'll spend a little bit of time knocking your head up against your computer because that last bit is the toughest bit to customize. There is a concern with update compliance, so if you've done custom modules or you've changed modules and then you deploy your, your Drupal updates, how do those things match together and how do you make sure they don't break the things that you've done? Never hack core. Pretty sure we're past this now, but I feel like I need to say that. You never <laughs> hack core. And then, of course, integrating your custom work with the overall Drupal in install can have its challenges if you don't know what you're doing. Any questions so far? No? Everyone's following along? Okay, great. Anyone need more snacks? <laughs> so, there you go. We've gone through some of the benefits and use cases of Drupal custom and Drupal custom. Essentially what we're saying is this requires a conversation and sometimes a real heart-to-heart -heart with either your dev team or your client to go through what are your requirements now, what are your requirements in the future, where are we best served, what meets your requirements best, what is your timeline, what is your, your budget, all these things play a factor 
and we always talk about having conversations. We sit as a team, we get a project in, we go through the pros and cons where it's not evident. Very often we get projects that are very evidently a uh, perfect Drupal uh, solution, and often we go back and forth on what would be the best way to leverage this. Because we don't want, what we don't want is for clients to hate Drupal. We don't want the developers to be mad at them you know, when they're trying to support and build projects. We don't want this kind of frustration around web projects. You never want to make the project fit the tool. You always want to make sure that based on requirements, you choose the right solution, and then you will avoid this aggro. All right, so we've got some examples for you. Does anyone have anything to interject or any questions so far? Sure. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, with Drupal, uh, you've kind of got inherent security, right? You've got a huge global team essentially working on modules. Um, there is a downside to that is that if there is a security flaw, it's a whole global network of people that now know about it, right? So um, you see a lot with WordPress, with Drupal, the bigger CMS is that whenever something happens, if, if your clients or your website doesn't get their updates, security updates deployed immediately, then you tend to be a target, right? Because you're, you're on these larger CMSs. Um, with custom, you still have the same security risk. Uh, you have what's called uh, security by obscurity in that depending on what you use and how you build it, people don't necessarily know how to get into it because you've got a custom module. That doesn't mean you're exempt from security at all. Um, so I'd say that from a security standpoint, it's easier to manage when you're with Drupal because you've got that community with you. If you're going custom, you're relying on either your vendor or if you're a client, you're uh, a third party person coming in doing an audit on your security. Um, so you're kind of, at that point, you're trusting. So the web, the web vendor would have to practice best practices and security if they're doing a custom application. If they don't know what those are, then you're leaving yourself open and vulnerable to their knowledge. Uh, because if they're building a custom application, they have to build in the security component with it. Or with Drupal, it comes more inherent. Did that answer your question? Anyone else? No? Okay, so we've got some examples of projects that we've worked on at Phoenix. And the first example, is Nokia. Nokia is a perfect Drupal client in that all their requirements meet Drupal CMS uh, tailored solutions. They want to manage content. They have multi, multi languages. They have multi site. They have dispersed geography, multiple publishers, faceted search. They're hosted on Acquia. Everything they want to do, it's a massive site. It's a huge enterprise. Yet, it really is simple in that it's really a content management solution. So we manage and deploy and build on the Nokia platform in Drupal, it's in Drupal 7, and it's perfectly tailored to content management. There are no other unique needs for this website. Within Drupal, there's a lot of unique needs, but in terms of the fact that it requires managed content, do you want to talk about any unique needs or no? Yeah. No, no, no. Let's say we have any questions about unique needs. So it, it's, a good, it's a good fit for Drupal, yeah. perfect fit for Drupal. This is an example of a client where uh, they're an association and 80% of their needs were met through Drupal. They wanted to manage content, they have members that need to have a login, Drupal provides that, they want members to pay their dues, renew their, new, their dues online, Drupal provides that, it has a member database, we can give them that, it's got news, images, galleries, you know, search, all that kind of stuff, that's all Drupal. Then they had this little 20% component that they said they needed. They wanted to be able to allow the members to manage their certification. These people have to show cert their, that they've maintained their certification over time. And every two or five years, they had to be prompted to say, you have logged in, and now you need to show us it's time for your certification. Reminders as you logged in, time for your certification. <laughs> and you had to then upload proof that you've done your courses, and there was this whole nothing in Drupal could satisfy that workflow. We could leverage nothing. It, it's such a unique workflow and had so many unique components around it that there was nothing we could leverage. So Paul built it custom, custom Drupal. So we deployed Drupal, it met 80% of their needs, and we built the CMP, certification management feature, as a custom piece in Drupal. That's it. Yeah. That's it. This you can't see very well. It's supposed to be all fancy back-end data stuff. This is the NAV Canada project. I referenced it earlier. We built this in Cake PHP in 2008, and we launched it in 2009. When we, it, this basically takes all of NAV Canada's hiring for air traffic controllers and flight specialists and automates it online, where it was previously a manually based process. 
That was a big deal at the time. When we launched this, it saved Nav Canada $1.1 million in the first six months of launch and two hires. This is a tool that Nav Canada to this day still uses every single day. Both the admin use it in terms of the fact that prior to this tool, Nav Canada never knew how many applicants they had, how, where people were in the process of applying. It takes two years to become an air traffic controller. If somebody in Gander, you know, five people in Gander are going to retire, Nav Canada didn't know if they had enough people in a database ready to fill those positions. They didn't have a clue where anybody was. One of the biggest problems they had was that they didn't know they would have 20,000 or, no, sorry, 4,000 applicants a year, and at the end, only 200 were making it through to the training. They didn't know where they fell off. Was it at the psychometric testing? Was it in the interview? Second interview? First interview? Medical? Where were these people falling off in the process? No idea, because it wasn't in a database. Nav Canada uses this as a business tool now. In the first year, we had 20,000 applicants. They know exactly how many people are being deployed to Gander and all their different uh, towers throughout Canada, who's in what stage, where they're falling off in the process over two years, so they can make business decisions about that. This is a specific, specific tailored solution that we couldn't have leveraged any costs for. On the front end, candidates get to log in. Prior to this tool, candidates would call. Two years in, where's my application? What do I do next? What happened with my interview? Like, they didn't have a clue. Candidates each now have a unique login. It's got a tab thing at the top where they can see you're in phase three, you've passed. Oh, it's pending interview. Uh, please respond to an interview date or something. It's all automated. No more phone calls. Candidates are well informed. NAF Canada uses this tool to make business decisions. This is a perfect example of a custom, custom application. <laughs> Okay, this is an upgrade screen grab. This is a project that we built in Drupal, and this is a bit of a back-end screen. Built it in Drupal, perfectly suited to Drupal. Everything they said, we were like, ding, 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 bells and whistles are going off. This is Drupal, no problem. <coughs> we built it, I promise. We built it. <laughs> and uh, everything's great. A uh, year or two later, they make an amendment. We decide that the amendment can leverage the web forms module in Drupal. No problem, this is great. This is what the requirements, perfect fit. A year after that, they come back and say, actually, this web forms module that we're capturing all this data for needs to do this, that, this, that, this, that, this, that. And that's when we realized we should never have built this in web forms. It's not the right tool or module for this. Had we known their future requirements, we would never, we would have built this as a custom module to meet all their future needs, but we didn't know that at the time. So what happened? client ended up having to compromise on their needs because they didn't have the budget to rebuild this as a custom piece, so they just changed their requirements. This happens all the time, right? If you don't have a budget for custom, all of a sudden, quickly, like if you want a new kitchen, it's going to cost you 100000 all of a sudden you think, okay, I'll just repaint the cupboards. Like all of a sudden you change your requirements to meet your budget, right? That's what these Yeah, it was one of our perfect examples, personally, when we thought we could leverage, so with web form, we want to get into our technical detail, um, you can just web form out of the box and hold forms on the site that you can fill up, right? And you can make it multiple choice, you can add text fields, whatever. Um, there's also a part of web form that you can build your own custom components and you can make your own kind of question that you can ask on your form. Uh, so that's kind of the, the part we leveraged. So we kind of went that uh, Drupal out of the box with a slight tweak to the module. Uh, and as Jen said, that's kind of where we fell short when they decided to change the requirements later in the future because they wanted to do more with it. It's like, well, we picked a need that fit into the box of your budget at the time, but now no longer fits, right? Whereas if we went custom Drupal and built their own questionnaire application, then upgrading and enhancing that would have been a lot easier. Easier. The, the issue is more so that existing data is already there, right? They have, if it was something like 10 or 20,000 candidates that log in and, and use these forms and trying to enhance it with web form, move that into the system is a big headache, so. I feel like maybe we have a comment from the from the seats, no? no? Yeah. yeah, okay. And this is my team here, part of my team, and I feel like they want to jump in and say stuff. And I think this shortfall could have been avoided if we had that conversation in advance of like, where do you guys plan on taking this? Like, if it takes off the way you want, and you know, if you had the pie in the sky, then you could have what would you want? Because if you can have that conversation and just have a glimpse of what they want or what you want, then you can make a decision. Yeah. And it might save the money. Yeah, yeah. Often it does save money. A lot. No heckling. Yeah, so we had uh, the exact same issue with public works. So we built the system uh, on web forms and then it would not scale at all. And um, at the very beginning, we had a discussion with the client that is the short term solution, but the client was so adamant that no, it has to be a web form, short term solution. Do what you do what you can as quickly as you can. 
right? So when that happens, what do you tell the client? Well, you know that picture where we had the girl talking very sincerely with the yellow <laughs> girl? You have to be honest and transparent and say, this will meet your current needs. But we've had this conversation with clients, but be mindful that we may have to rebuild this entire solution in a year from now if it takes off. A lot of people will come to us, clients will come, and naturally they've got short budgets, short budgets and short time frames. And we'll say this is not the right solution for you, but we've got to get up and running quickly. And then if it takes off, we revisit, is this still the right structure moving forward? And they understand that possibly a rebuild might be required. Is that I, the best solution? I actually had this conversation with uh, one of my clients, and what ends up happening is I explain to them, basically, if you do go the quick route, do know that if we had to do it the right way again, this is what your difference is in cost. And as long as they know about it, then when they come back and they say, okay, I'm going to do this, you're like, okay. We have landed before, so what we talked about is the same thing. So we call it expectation setting. Unfortunate, but yeah. It's expectation it's setting with the client. We always like to be, if you go this route or this route, here's what you expect a year from now. And then they make a decision based on that. Did that answer your question? This is our final example. And after everything I told you about all the requirements that you need to make sure you choose Drupal, we built a website, Grapevine. Is anyone familiar with the grapevine.ca, right? The for sale by owner type thing? Um, we built this in Drupal, and it is not a CMS. So after I told you it had to meet all these criteria, multilingual, multicultural type tags, all that stuff, this had none of that. And we still built it in Drupal. And it still manages to serve the client well after five or six years. We have many debates internally. The motivation for building it in Drupal was time and cost. Plus, the client didn't currently have a tool where they could see how many listings were posted, when they were expiring, um, when the open houses were, uh, how to approve new listings and all that kind of stuff. They didn't have a facility to do that. So this tool at least gave them all that in the back end. So their back end office was well set up through Drupal. But the front end really isn't a content management, it's a search, right? It allows you to search for homes. And deploying something like Solar or Elasticsearch will help greatly with that experience and is required in this instance. But that's a, a, a situation where Drupal wasn't really a natural fit, but because there were time and budget considerations and the client had nothing that they could leverage to manage their business with, Drupal was, was a good fit and it's continued to be for four or five years. So there are exceptions, right? Where you can build things in Drupal that aren't naturally a fit as long as you have that conversation with the client and they understand the limitations and opportunities provided by Drupal. That is our talk. You're here to listen to this presentation because understanding when to sell Drupal is an important um, piece of information for you. If that would be why this would be of interest, right? To understand when to serve what technology? Okay. For anyone who didn't put up your hand, what do you do? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We got a QA girl, yeah. QA. Anybody else doing QA? No? Okay. All right. Is anybody here on the client side that isn't a web developer? Per, well, I guess your client side, but your developer, um, like somebody who would be looking for web development companies and trying to figure out what to do with their own organization. No, that's it. Okay, I just want to get a sense of the room. You with the beer? What do you do? <laughs> What's that? Sorry. Ah, very well. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So does anyone have any questions or want to just clarify anything that we've mentioned? The presentation will be made available at this link, so you're welcome to, uh, and if I can always email it out to anybody if you're interested. Go ahead. So 
more of a maybe not really related to the presentation, but it's more of a poll I'm doing. Is yeah. How many projects are you building on the DA versus the set? I think we're trying to go more DA, where the requirements fit in that we have a current project coming in that I want to go D8, but the team isn't convinced that it's got the right modules available for us to build off of, and it should be unfortunate, because by the time you start the project and finish it, six or seven months goes by, they might get there, but at this moment in time, so we are going D8 and have done a bunch of projects in it, but it, it still depends on just the requirements of the client and whether the modules are available. Is that fair? Yeah. So. With this project, we chose triple seven. Well, we haven't officially chosen it, I guess. You guys, you're the first. It's breaking news. Because of that, again, the client time budget constraint, right? Whereas, if okay. you, yeah, if you have the option to go through play, I think it's a good time because even if it might not have a module in place, if that's something that triple seven does, if you've got the time, you can help contribute. Build it, yeah. So that's right, we had that conversation where I was pushing Amy, he said, well, we would have to build a bunch of modules, which we would love to do, but we have to work to a deadline. So we're at this situation where it's like, well, we could, if we have the novelty of time, we would love to do that and contribute, um, but we have a very short time frame. Did that answer your question? Yeah. yeah. Go ahead. So in front of that, uh, in some sort of modules, what we found is that for example, Amy didn't have enough CRM because I'm just because of that one missing our concern was like with D7 eventually going into life soon. Yes, agreed. And knowing that we have to rebuild it. Yes. Well. Like we saw that, yes, it's like we were stuck where it's like either we invest in building the modules or we invest in rebuilding the whole site. Right. So I think, you know, how do you quantify both situations yeah. and really figure that out? That's a valid, valid concern. The architecture of is much more stable and better. Like you want to take a platform just for picking one, and that's what we did. Yeah, and what I would say to that is, as long as you set expectations <laughs> for a job, as long as you set expectations for budget and time with your bosses or whoever it is that's asking you, and you've got that ability, then absolutely go D8, because it, it's the platform you want to build on. And it won't, uh, what's the BD Commission, what's it called, unsupported anytime soon, because it's the newest platform. Um, but we are often under the gun, and uh, have to serve client deadlines. So, but if you if you can if you can get that expectation set, absolutely, I would do it. Go ahead. Um, have you fixed your projects yet? Upgrading from seven to eight. We talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it, about upgrading Drupal seven to eight. Um, I'm of the opinion still that everyone likes to call it an upgrade, but I think a lot of times it ends up being a rebuild. Um, and I could be wrong, you know, your situation clients can be different, but I find a lot of times when a client comes to us and is like, oh, we want to be on the new version. They don't just want to be on a new version. They may right. want to change the way the Function. site looks, or they want to add a new feature here. And a lot of times it ends up just being a rebuild. Like, you know, maybe you can leverage some of the content, or you can leverage some of the, the structure and the theme, and you'd be like, oh, okay, I know how to set this up because it was done in, in Drupal 7, I can see the code, but a lot of times it's, it's generally a rebuild. That's our experience anyways. Are you a developer? No, I'm not Okay. Yeah, I get asked that a lot too, where they're like, can we just upgrade your plane? I'm like, oh, that's, that's that yeah. sounds a lot simpler yeah. than, than it is. We need that easy yeah. button. Yeah. Like, we're just sort of looking ahead, we have found the support of some stuff is made, let's say, slower for some. Yes. Yeah. So sort of thinking ahead. Yes. Everyone's focus right now is on eight. It's an exciting, shiny new thing. <laughs> <laughs> and it's built entirely different, so it's yeah. kind of exciting, right? Mm -hmm. So. Anyone else? Does anyone have any questions or comments? Well, thank you very much for your time today. We appreciate it.